Don't listen to these influencers when they tell you there is only one way to do something. There are multiple ways to do something and the consideration of your life and your happiness can't be forgotten. I haven't even filmed the video yet, well obviously I'm, I'm filming it right now, but I can, I can tell it's going to be a bloody humdinger. There's going to be a, an, a workout example for the old glutes at the end of this video. Hang about for that, or if you really can't wait, then timestamps and chapters are always linked down below so you are able to skip ahead if you so wish. Obviously, although I would rather you hang around for the entirety of the video, but it's up to you. What's occurring today is arm movement. I just want to say a very quick thank you for all of the amazing support and the kind words on the last video. I do very much appreciate it. And believe me when I say it, I think you're all bloody stupendous. I, I cannot express to you how, how proud I am of you as a community and as individuals, just because of how supportive you always are, not just to me, but also to others in the comment section. It makes my day. So again, just please continue to be you because you're bloody fantastic. And uh, I saw a few of you apologizing for negativity I'd received in the past. Please don't ever feel the need to apologize because in all honesty, I love it. I find it really funny. And sometimes the insults are really creative and I love to see it. YouTube does flag a lot of them so they don't get posted to the comment section. But when I do have a little scroll through the hidden folder, <laughs> Some of them do make me chuckle. I just primarily wanted to make that video not so much for me and for how I'm feeling, but more so because I could fully understand how negative comments like that could negatively impact others, and I felt like it needed to be addressed. So again, I do very much appreciate all of you. And then I got a few other comments um, either on that video or in previous videos about my appearance. The thing I want to clarify very quickly is that I will likely never make my channel about my appearance. And by, by appearance, I mean obviously not my face, but more my body. Sure, it may appear in train footage occasionally, here and there it will never be the focal point of, of my channel because ultimately I want you to invest in me my content and my channel because of who I am as a person my values and my knowledge I don't want you to invest in me because of my physique I think I think the the value of my content hopefully goes far beyond physical appearance I tend to keep anything that might be like potentially revealing of my physique either isolated to training footage or or to my Instagram. But now we're gonna crack on the video and it's a bloody humdinger because ultimately we're gonna go through five things I did to insanely grow my glutes by Gains by Brains. I'm gonna spice it up a bit, provide my own bits and bobs. But before we do so, you know the very quick things must be done. If at any point you decide you like the video, please let me know you like the video by liking the video. 1300 likes in the first 24 hours, that was my hand. Is the goal, so if we reach out, that'd be bloody amazing. If you haven't already, please do consider clicking the red button down below to subscribe to the channel and maybe even the bell next to it so you get notified when I upload every week, twice a week. And if you two have a question you want me to answer at the end of the next video please do consider dropping it down below in the comment section for comment question week and i shall do so i need to breathe and obviously i was complaining about how stressful long hair was i thought you know what harry you've got two degrees do something about it so i bought another wig and guess what short hair I've, I've fixed the problem the world comes at me with problems and i just retaliate with solutions because it's all i know look at this incredible scenes to an, i would say it's actually probably suits me better than the last one. So this video is obviously going to be split into sections as highlighted by the chapters below. So essentially the video is Games by Brains talking about five things she did to grow her glutes. And we're going to go through them, we're going to pick them apart and I'm going to give my opinion on them. I'm also going to provide my own, my own thoughts on things you can maybe consider to grow said glutes. Tip number one is to train hard AF. Your glutes can handle so much. They are insanely strong and you can train them really, really hard. Honestly, training intensity is huge. You can put together the best training program in the world, the most optimal movements to have ever existed with the perfect amount of volume. But if you're not training with sufficient intensity, you are going to lack sufficient results. And by intensity, we mean your proximity to failure, we'll say. So how close you are to failing and not being able to do any more reps with appropriate and safe technique. The green zone, I've mentioned this a few times, is between zero and four reps in reserve. So as long as you're you're kind of within four reps from failure, you're in a good spot. I tend to kind of push mine nearer the, the zero to two mark, especially considering a lot of people aren't very good at gauging where failure is. So if you think 10 is failure, you could probably actually do 13, 14, 15 in a lot of cases. It's about being able to power through when your mind says no, but your body says I've probably got a couple more left in the tank. Now when I say train them really, really hard, I don't mean that you need to put as much weight on your barbell or on your machines as possible. That's almost exactly the opposite of what I mean. I mean that 
Sometimes it's slowing down, it's increasing the time under tension. It is having the most insane mind-muscle connection with your glutes, so you can feel every muscle fiber. The time under tension it is, I mean, sure it has a time and a place, but the deliberate slowing of the concentric portion of the rep, so the, the portion of the rep in which you're contracting, isn't something I would personally utilize uh, as a fundamental training tool myself. Paul Carter actually did a really good post on that a while back. And then mind-muscle connection, again, JPG, Ryan Jewett, and loads of other people have spoken about this, myself included, actually. Mind-muscle connection is a tricky one because it is probably not as important as you might think it is. Because as you get stronger, sensation typically tends to decrease decrease you lift more weight you can often feel it less it doesn't mean your muscles are working less it means you're channeling so much energy into other facets of that movement versus just trying to squeeze the biceps or the glutes for example a lot of people confuse sensation for effectiveness which is why i mean like just because it's hurting doesn't mean it's actually working effectively you can do a very subpar movement but if i do so in a manner that means i'm squeezing the glutes i can make it really hurt my glutes but biomechanically it's probably not targeting the glutes as well as you think it is again i'm not saying it's not important i'm merely just stating it's probably not as important as you think it might be. Tip number two doesn't require much explanation but it is hip hinge exercises. So yeah hip hinge movements are fantastic. Uh, my more commonly preferred hip hinge movements would be like an RDL for example like a Romanian deadlift. I'm not going to elaborate too much on that because you'll see when I go through a workout example. Don't just train with the sole intention of changing your physique. Not that's a bad thing, it's, it's all up to you, there's no judgment here. However, it is very hard to stick to something long term if the motivation is external. I covered in a recent video I was discussing motivation versus discipline. Motivation will only get you so far, discipline is usually what carries you the rest of the way and really pushes you to do the workouts you really don't want to do. I don't think training to change your physique is a bad goal whatsoever. To be honest, especially if your goals are more aesthetic and maybe like bodybuilding or physique focused, you are largely training to change your physique. But that's not a change implying that your current physique is bad or anything wrong with it. It's just that you want to alter it and improve what is already great, which I think is fine. But remember, it's obviously harder to see physical physique changes than it is to see weight progressions. And by that I mean is you're going to see the weights on the machines increase faster than you're going to see your body change. The fourth one is to drink more water. I feel like drinking more water is the answer to almost all problems in life, or at least 80% of them. Again, it's quite a generic tip here, and I don't necessarily think it's a bad one. But yeah, hydration is key. Obviously, the consideration that your muscles are, I believe, 76% water or something along those lines highlights that hydration is very important, not only when considering performance, but also when considering recovery. So when you are training in the gym, you are breaking bits and bobs down, you're struggling, you're hurting yourself, fantastic, but you need to then recover. And part of that recovery is ensuring you're drinking enough water, eating enough food, etc., etc. But I'm going to get onto that when I cover my five tips to help you grow your glutes, which we'll get to any moment now. So remember that, make sure you're drinking plenty of water before you train, but also ensuring that you're consuming enough salt before you train. So if I haven't had much salt in the day, I will typically have like a quarter or maybe half a teaspoon of salt mix with water, drink that beforehand, and it has significantly enhanced my performance in the gym. So that is definitely a consideration for you to try at home. Before your workouts, like I say, if you haven't had enough salt, do consider, if you're obviously healthy and able to do so, maybe consuming one to two grams of salt before your workout, and just ensuring you're drinking enough water with that. For me personally, it's it's been a big change for my for my training. Also helps with the pump as well, which you know who doesn't love a good pump. And then the last one is be boring with your workouts. So especially when it comes to training your glutes, you want to be boring with them. You want to do the same exercises over and over again, the same rep ranges. Yeah, honestly, I have a fantastic tip. Workouts are usually often, especially when you're looking at like optimizing your progression can often be quite boring because you do have to repeat movements and repeat workouts for extended periods of time so you can track progression and progressive overload. Every time you're in the gym, you're just doing a little bit better than you did the last week. And that's all we can do. Granted, that doesn't always happen every week, but we will try our best. And if it doesn't happen for a few weeks, consideration of maybe, you know what, are you recovering enough? Have you maybe exhausted that movement? Do you need to maybe change things around? Loads of things. Are you eaty enough? All sorts. Those are Gains by Brains' five top tips for growing your glutes. But what are my five top tips? And again, this can apply to 
a lot of goals in general, not just glute growth or glute hypertrophy, but many things. And again, this is in no particular order, but I'm, I'm going to give you my, my secret tips and tricks, you know. So although these are obviously fantastic and good, let's just spice it up a bit. Number one, very much aligns with her first tip here, which is obviously training intensity. So like I said earlier about proximity to failure, ensuring that we are training within the zero to four reps in reserve kind of green zone. Again, I push closer towards the zero if possible, depending on obviously recovery and whatnot, because like I said, people are typically not very good at gauging where failure actually is. Also ensuring that every week, as I've just mentioned, that you are progressively overloading if you are able to. So every week you're going to go in, you're going to do a little bit more. One kilo heavier than you did the previous week, one rep more than the previous week. Maybe even a bit of additional volume, like another set if you're at that point of your training program. Number two, sufficient weekly volume and training frequency. Ensure that you're hitting every muscle with sufficient volume, and ideally you want to be hitting every muscle at least twice per week. Bigger muscles tend to take longer to recover, so you might hit them two times per week, whereas smaller muscles might take less time to recover, like the biceps for example, so you can maybe justify less volume more frequently, so let's say three or four times a week. But for the glutes specifically, I'd probably say at least two times a week, maybe depending on recovery and volume, you could consider three times a week, but if you're training hard enough and with sufficient volume, I think you'd be surprised at how effective training them really effectively twice per week can be. But tip number three, food intake. Ensuring that you're eating enough food and ensuring that you're consuming enough protein. So typically uh, a rule of thumb for protein intake is about one gram of protein per pound of body weight. Calorie wise, ensuring that you are eating enough food because although technically we can grow in a deficit because muscle gain is signal driven rather than food driven. And by that I mean that progressive overload is arguably more important than eating in a surplus when building muscle, but it is much easier to progressively overload when you are in a surplus due to that surplus of energy and additional calories that you are consuming. So they kind of go hand in hand, although one might not be necessary for the other, if that makes sense. Tip number four, recovery. Ensure that you are recovering enough. You can give it the beans in the gym, you know, training to failure five times a week, but if you're not recovering enough, you are not gonna grow, you're not gonna progress. In many cases, you may actually regress, so go backwards, which is not what we want. So recovery can come down to a few things. You're looking at load management. There's nothing you consider is deloading, ensuring that you are deloading when necessary. It really depends, but recovery is key. Take those rest days. They're not something to feel guilty about. They're not something that imply that you're lazy or not dedicated to your goals whatsoever. You are taking those rest days because you want to achieve your goals. And to optimize your progression, you must rest. Laziness has nothing to do with it. Please remember that. And number five, effective movements. Obviously, ensuring you're training hard with sufficient volume, all those bits and bobs are ticked off. You can consider what are effective movements, and that's actually what we're going to dis discuss right now. So I'm going to give you right now a bloody splendid glute workout. No, it is not the best glute workout in the world because that doesn't exist. It is merely one way of programming a glute workout when there are countless ways to do so. And we're going to go through it together. And I challenge you to try this glute workout and let me know how, how you get on with it. And maybe even tag me in it on Instagram, TikTok, wherever it may be, because I'd love to see and I'd love to hear your thoughts. Assuming you've warmed up, you're ready to go, you're ready to crack on, we're going to go through a four exercise glute workout. That's going to be bloody splendid. First movement, we're going to consider something like a glute bridge your hip thrust. So a heavy glute movement in which you're working the glutes in their shortened position. And by shortened position, I mean when the majority of the load is kind of focused on the contraction portion of the rep. So the lengthened position is when your muscle is kind of stretched out. So maybe the nearer the bottom of the squat for the glutes perhaps. And when your muscle is shortened, it is contracted. So the top of the, of the glute bridge. And we're gonna start with a shortened position movement first because muscles typically tend to fatigue first in their shortened position. So we want to get that one out of the way first. And with the glute bridges, we're going to do two sets of six to 10 reps. Heavy, with good form, good control, but training two, if not very close to failure. The second movement is going to be our primary hip hinge movement, which is going to be an RDL, working the glutes in their lengthened position now. Similar sort of rep range and sets, two sets of six to 10 reps. Again, training two, if not close to failure with bloody good technique. But the thing we're going to do here is we're going to add a bit of additional knee flexion. So you're gonna bend the knees a bit more, shifting it to more of a glute bias RDL from a hamstring bias RDL. So if obviously if our legs were a bit straighter and our knees were a bit more extended, we would be biasing the hamstrings a bit more because obviously they're bent a bit more, we're gonna put a bit more emphasis on the glutes. Although muscles do typically tend to, to grow more in their lengthened position, it's still very important to target both positions and that's what we're doing here. Number three, it's a movement you knew was coming. 
is a movement that I wish wasn't here at all. Would it be a glute workout if I didn't include a split squat variation? And again, this is gonna be a split squat in which you are leaning slightly forward, not worrying so much about elevating that heel because this is not a quad bias split squat, it's a glute bias split squat. So like I said, we're gonna lean and hinge at the hips slightly and alter our torso angle. And we're gonna do a bloody splendid split squat with full range of motion. So knee tickling the floor, not banging the floor, but you're gonna tickle the floor. And we're gonna tickle about two sets of eight to 12 reps. Then you're gonna do a back off slightly lighter set of 15 reps. So three sets total, tickling multiple rep ranges. And for our last movement, our fourth movement is a movement you probably didn't expect me to include, but for a glute dominant lower body workout, I feel like it does have a time and a place provided it is done properly. And that's going to be a glute medius cable kickback. And by, by done properly, you'll see an example from JPG on screen now, is ensuring that we are going through the correct range of motion and not kicking to the side, not kicking directly back, but kicking about 45 to maybe 30 degrees out behind us. Again, for the reps and sets, we're gonna tickle three sets of about 12 to 20 reps here, so higher reps. Not only have we targeted the glutes, in both their lengthened and shortened position. We've also tackled other muscles as well. So we've got the quads in there as well, and we've got the hamstrings in there as well, fantastic. And we've also put sufficient emphasis on all muscles of the glutes. That's a bloody top tier glute workout if you ask me. We've also gone through rep ranges ranging anywhere from six to 20. So we're targeting loads of different rep ranges. And we also have room if you want to increase volume, you can by maybe increasing the, the first two movements from two sets to three sets as your training block progresses. Again, this is just one way of structuring the workout, but is a bloody effective glute workout. And again, I would love for you to try it and tag me on the gram or wherever it may be on the TikTok machine and let me know your thoughts because every time you tag me in split squat videos, I laugh and everyone laughs at me. It's a bloody great time. As a whole, some pretty good tips by Games by Brains and hopefully the workout provided at the end of my tips help you achieve your goals, whether they be general hypertrophy, weight loss, glute growth, whatever it may be, you can apply a lot of what I've said to nearly any goal. But now obviously we'll crack on with comment question of the week. It's a very relevant one considering we talk about leg day and glute growth. I only do leg days once a week now because I find them really exhausting and taxing on my body. I'm also a very active person. I run four to five times a week and I'm a dancer, so I'm already exhausted by the time I'm at the gym. Will I still gain strength and muscle if I keep it to once a week? Absolutely. At the end of the day, you have other things going on. Like, like you said, you run, you dance, you do other bits and bobs. If you can only train your, your legs once per week, then that, that's fine. Obviously, in the ideal world, we would want to train them perhaps multiple times a week if possible, but if you're only able to train them once per week, that's more than enough. Just ensure that every time you go to the gym, you're making that leg day count, you know, doing a bit more every week, you're training a bit harder, lifting a bit more weight, doing an extra rep here and there. We're ensuring that progressive overload and intensity are there because they are gonna be the big drivers of progression and growth. And ensure that you're recovering enough. So check your food intake, check your sleep, check your protein intake, check your water intake. Just ensure you're not doing too much and ensure that you are giving your body sufficient rest because it needs a rest to grow. Don't listen to these influencers when they tell you there is only one way to do something. There are multiple ways to do something and the consideration of your life and your happiness can't be forgotten. That is it, that is the video. If at any point you decide you like the video or even if at any point you decide you maybe learned something in this video, please let me know by dropping a like on the video. 1300 likes in the first 24 hours is the goal. So if we reach that, that'd be bloody amazing. If you haven't already, please do consider clicking the red button down below to subscribe to the channel and maybe even the bell next to it so you get notified when I upload every week, twice a week. If you too have a question you want me to answer at the end of the next video, please do consider dropping it down below in the comment section for comment question of the week and I shall do so. Thank you for tolerating me. Thank you for tolerating the example glute workout I have challenged you to that unfortunately does include split squats. Please forgive me if I have to do them and suffer, so do you. And thank you for tolerating the video.